this last year has brought so many challenges in so many different ways, and we are challenged as a country to find our identity once again amidst internal turmoil, politically, economically, and morally. We've struggled to make meaning of the many wars that have plagued our nation. As a nation collectively, we have been met with challenges of survival. And at the end of the day, this is what brings us together as human beings. We want a secure future, a friendly, peaceful world for ourselves and our children. And we can only attain this through communication and through acceptance and by building a strong foundation that can withstand our differences and build our common threads. It is my pleasure, and I say it from the bottom of my heart, to introduce to you a man who has been called a peacemaker, a man with a history that can rival any historical figure that comes to mind, and an individual whose ideals and vision of our world have advised presidents and changed history. He literally has handwritten messages from John F. K. Um, asking him for advice. It is with great pleasure deep respect and tremendous honor, I introduce to you a historical figure in our lifetime, Ambassador Dr. Clovis Maksud. first part of the music, I said, my gosh, I'm not one to follow that. <laughs> there could be a big letdown. It was so beautiful, so beautiful, so revealing, so specific. Thank you very much. I'm glad the governor came, interrupted between you and me. And then we have beautiful sights here, and then the impressive speech that I just heard now. Now, to bore you. <laughs> I want to start why there is the notion of diversity. Diversity is the definition of citizenship. Pluralism is the definition of discrimination. When we are plural, we are a number. When we are diverse, we are human. And that is the paradox of our time. We are living in a world of what is called globalization. We get together, we're informed, we're instantly informed of what takes place in China, in Hawaii, in Saudi Arabia. We're stunned with the CNNization of information. We are supposedly global citizens. But we are not. Because simultaneously, and this is the paradox of our time, simultaneously, what we are experiencing is globalization and fragmentation at the same time. What we are witnessing in the area of the region where I come from, in the Arab world, the promise of Arab Spring was a product of globalization. We were informed about scientific breakthroughs. We were informed about what is taking place everywhere. Citizens in our countries were being and acquiring knowledge. And then the Arab Spring two, three years later, proved how dynamic 
is our commitment to overthrow authoritarianism, dictatorship, ruthlessness, and police states. But on the other hand, this healthy upheaval that the Arab Spring brought about was an indication of the vitality of the Arab people. But the vitality had no pivot, no sense of clear direction. And that fact, that when you have a positive upheaval, it is arrested if you don't have a point of reference. A further point which is revealed by this conference is the term diversity. And that is a crucial word because diversity is the bar that prevents globalization from fragmentation. Because if globalization brings to our collective sense awareness, knowledge, information, without having the sense of clear direction, then we are the plurality of the world. We are pluralism. We discover that we are different. We are Africans, we are Asians, we are Arabs, etc. We discover, then we are pluralists. We lose the sense of coherence of citizenship. We distinct, we define each other. Diversity, we celebrate. We celebrate. I meet a Belgian, a German, a Russian, an Arab, a Jew, etc. In a community of citizenship, we celebrate diversity. And then we deter globalization from leading us to fragmentation. However, we have not yet been shielded from the threat of fragmentation. How to restore, how to absorb the intense knowledge that globalization is providing humanity. How to avoid the fragmentation that ensues as we are experiencing, as it unraveling what is taking place by the terrorists by the differences and distinctions between Christians, Muslims, Jews, Hindus, fighting each other, assuming for themselves the absoluteness of truth for each one of them in a sort of a pluralist production. How do we restore the community of citizens in various parts of the world? That's the challenge. That's the challenge of governance. That's the challenge of change. That is the challenge of people like you. How to restore the supremacy of diversity and deny pluralism to destroy and separate us from each other. That is the challenge. That is why today, here, you are providing the yeast, chamira, the yeast of what ought to be. You are providing the shield that protects your diversity from being transformed into fragmented pluralisms. Pluralism, I assert, I'm different from you. And if I'm different from you, 
I presume that I am superior to you. Then the function becomes and produces discrimination. That has been the story of his discrimination. We live in a world, in a world of challenges, in a world where the arrogance of power has reduced the intellectual influence of human beings. And when power is separated from influence, it becomes absolute. When influence is separated from governance, it cannot deliver a good and democratic society. We are living at this moment in history. And what we are experiencing, in particular in the countries which I belong to, suffering the tribalism, suffering the sectarianism within one religion, suffering the tearing away of the social and political and cultural factor and culture. We are experiencing mutual alienation because we are developing into pluralism. Well, if we rediscover our community of citizenship, we celebrate and enjoy our cultural and personal diversity. When we are diverse and not plural, we are interested in each other to know. We produce friendship by diversity. And we produce arrogance by self-asserting that I am different from you. Go throughout history. The great musicians, the great poets, the great statesmen produced those who believe in diversity because it presumes tolerance and respect for the other. The most recent example of the person who nowadays irrespective of all of us, what we belong to, which religion, which culture, is the emerging, not of an authoritarian religious leader, but of a very humanitarian religious leader, Pope Francis. That is the promising, that is the promise of power, producing influence, not power, power producing arrogance. We in the Arab world have not had for a long time the soothing diversity amongst each other. We have emerged into a situation where we became more pluralist than diverse. And in that sense, we have transformed ourselves into divisiveness. Yet, if you aim at restoring the good society, if you aim at bringing about a rational discourse, if you begin to enjoy what we heard at the beginning of this session today, appreciate it. It's a diverse song. It's a diverse music. It's not the Arabic music. 
But they would be joy in Kansum and Fairuz because we are diverse. But if it's pluralism, they are distinct. They might be liked or not liked, appreciated or not appreciated. Amidst this paradox of our time, globalization makes available knowledge, enhancement, and diversity. Fragmentation separates us into pluralism, separates us into suspicion of each other. Skepticism prevails. We begin recoiling into our primitive instincts instead of absorbing the new knowledge of science and culture. Violence becomes an outcome as we find in the prevalence, emerging prevalence of terrorism. What they want us to feel is to be fearful of what might take place in a surprise instead of sitting down where you are, listening to the beautiful music, beautiful fun, beautiful things, which is a product of diversity, while terrorism is the product of extreme pluralism. Pluralism is incoherent. Diversity is coherent. In a commitment to diversity of citizenship, we absorb the knowledge in to enhance our diversity and therefore enjoy it and live in the pursuit of happiness. Well, if we insist on our differences, insist that they are a competition of superior races, then we are in the product of producing frustrated terrorists and therefore the prevalence of fear, the challenge today. The challenge today is to redefine citizenship in terms of a society of diverse citizens. When we do that, as Martin Luther King said, we shall overcome. Thank you.